गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स आई विल जस्ट स्टार्ट अगेन चैप्टर सेवन एम टी लेवल थ्री मैग्नेटिक प्रिंसिपल्स इट इज एनफ हाउ मच आई विल मार्क एंड रीड फॉर यू मैग्नेटिक पार्टिकल टेस्टिंग इज ए नॉन डेस्ट्रक्टिव मेथड ऑफ रिवीलिंग स्ट्रक्चर एंड स्लाइटली सबसरफेस टू रो raw material such as billets and bars during process such as forming masoning welding heating and ductural plating and in testing for service related discontinuities magnetic particle procedure cannot be used with non magnetizable material such as aluminum and copper so many are there so non paramagnetic colors magnetic flux leakage magnetic flux in a magnetized test object is locally distorted by the presence of a discontinuity this distortion causes some of the magnetic field to exit and re-enter the test object at the discontinuity this phenomenon is called magnetic flux leakage this flux leakage is capable of attracting fine particles to the magnetic part material that is turned from in turn from an outline or indication of the disk the discontinuity six basic operations clean the test object up establish a suitable magnetic flux in the test object apply magnetic particle in a dry powder liquid suspension examine the test object under suitable lighting condition interpret and evaluate the test indication demagnetize if necessary the type of discontinuity being looked for the test object the material shape and the size of the test object the magnetic particle testing equipment available the type of amount of electrical current to be used for magnetization if the discontinuity is short or at surface alternating current has several advantages the rapid reveal reversal of the field imparts mobility to the particles especially to dry powders the densing of the powder helps it move to leakage fields and to form stronger indication this effect is less pronounced in wet method the direction of the resulting magnetic field obtained using this currents this kind of magnetic particle to be used how the testing media is to be applied so all this effect magnetic field theory some materials that can be magnetized for the atom that are classified for sub microscopic regions called magnetic domains these domains have a positive and negative polarity at opposite ends because of internal atomic alignment the material that is not magnetized the domains are randomly oriented oriented usually parallel to the crystalline axis of the material when ferromagnetic material is subjected to a magnetic field the domains are aligned parallel to the external magnetic field the magnetic poles ability to attract or repel is not uniform over the surface of the magnet but is concentrated at localized areas called poles these every magnet that are two or more poles with opposite polarities these poles are attracted to the earth's magnetic pole and therefore is called north and south poles so this is domain theory so orientation of magnetic domains in you know, unmagnetized material and magnetic material b so that is they form continuous loops already with that are never broken they do not cross one another they are considered to have direction leaving from the north pole and traveling to the south pole their density decreases with increasing distance from poles the sixth or path of least magnetic resistance or reluctance in the com in completing their loop so this north pole to south pole is outside south pole to north pole inside the center piece of the figure 2 is reversed so that similar poles are adjacent the lines of force repel one magnet from the other if one of the bars is small enough the lines of force can cause it to rotate 
so that unlike poles are again adjacent. <coughs> the broken bar magnet illustrating the location of newly formed magnetic poles. So if broken, it will become north. This become south, this become north. This is half broken, this is full broken. Magnetic fields, magnetic lines of flux flow from the south pole through the magnet to the north pole. The lines of flux flow, flow from the north pole of the magnet through the material to, be, to the south pole. Mm -hmm. Sorry. North pole of the magnet through the material to the south pole. Okay. So north to south inside. Huh? Magnetic lines of flux flow differentially through magnetic material rather than non-magnetic material or air. Let me see why this book is also creating problem for me. Okay. So inside it is going for from North Pole to South Pole. Flow from North Pole of the magnet through the material to the South Pole. Then outside is South to North. See if sometime I'm wrong, just modify me. Magnetic lines of flux flow preferentially through magnetic material rather than non-magnetic material or air. Why this? Here like one, here one. Magnetic lines of flux from the south pole through the magnet to the North Pole. Here something wrong. It is material, through material to the South Pole. That's why it is creating problem. See, through the magnet it is South to North only. And this is through any material, any material outside. North Pole to South Pole. That means outside. Forget fucking thing. Magnetic lines of flux flow preferentially through magnetic material rather than non-magnetic material or air. You understand this? So inside bar magnet, it is going bar magnet or any magnet. So it is going from South Pole to North Pole. And outside, any material is there. You are testing material. It goes from North to South. The magnetizing ring, a ring magnetized in this manner is said to contain a circular magnetic field that is wholly within the object. A radial crack in a circularly magnetized object creates north and south magnetic poles at the edge of the crack. If crack is there, then you find some problem. 
So you will come across that, no problem. So you find North and South Poles. Magnetic particles are attracted to the poles created by crack forming an indication on the metal test object. The magnetic flux lines flow through the bar from the south pole to the north pole with the flux density uniform along the bar. Where the concentration of external flux lines is greatest since the magnetic Flux within the bar magnet may run the length of the bar. It is said to be longitudinally magnetized or contain a longitudinal field. The bar magnet is longitudinal field. The strength of poles from the crack depend on the number of magnetic flux lines interrupted. A crack at right angle to the magnetic lines of force interrupted more flux lines and create stronger poles than a crack that is parallel to the flux lines. Test indications of magnetic maximum size are formed when discontinuities are at right angles to the magnetic lines of flux. Retentivity and coercive force. The retentivity of a particular magnetic material is its property to retain to a greater or less degree, lesser degree, a certain amount of magnetic magnetism after the magnetic force is removed. Coercive force is defined as the reverse magnetizing force necessary to remove this residual magnetism to demagnetize a test piece. So magnetic permeability of material mu B equal to mu h, mu times h, h is the magnetic field strength. B is the flux density. Flux, flux and flux density, flux per unit area. Flux density, flux density B is often got quantity of interest and has higher values for the permeability of a given source field strength h. It increases mu times h. For a ferromagnetic substance. They are not so important, just units of measure of magnetic flux. Magnetic flux is used when referring to all of the lines of flux in a given area. Flux per unit area is called magnetic flux density, the number of lines of flux passing transversely through the unit area. So one lines of force is, one lines of flux is, uh, all these things will come, come, let, let, let us complete this. So magnetic hysteresis, magnetic hysteresis curve. Let us see this curve. So the zero magnetic field strength, a new material when magnetizing, we are magnetizing this. So this, this is zero OA. This is start increasing when we go on increasing the magnetic field, magnetic correct. So flux density increases and maximum point some maximum point that is saturation. All things align properly. All domains align properly at the saturation point. So then it will not go in a straight line parallel to this x-axis. So from that field, that portion we have to return. When we return to this point, OB, it is not returning to and so we are decreasing the magnetic field. So at zero, and the magnetic strength is zero. It is not returning to zero. So there is some residual magnetism. And 
to remove this residual magnetism, the force is required is minus minus field strength. The yes, field strength that is called coercive force. So this is residual, this is coercive. <clears throat> so that is what they describe here. The curve OA is often drawn as this uh, dashed line because it occurs only during the initial ma magnetization of unmagnetized material. It is referred to as the virgin curve of the material. When the magnetic field strength is reduced to zero, the flux density slowly decreases. It lacks the field strength and doesn't reach zero. The amount of flux density remaining in the material line 0B is called residual magnetism or remanence as shown in the figure 4B. The ability of ferromagnetic material to retain certain amount of magnetism is called retentivity. So all questions, question answers. Additional reverse field strength is applied. The rate of reduction is flux density is BC. Increases until it is almost a straight line where B equal to zero as shown in the figure 4C. So zero C here become zero. Or D, sorry. Point C, the magnetic flux density is polarity and initially increases quite rapidly. The amount of magnetic field strength necessary to reduce the flux density to zero is called coercive force. It's 4C. As the reverse magnetic field strength is increased beyond C, the 4D, the magnetic flux changes to its polarity, initially increases quite rapidly. Reverse polarity saturation point, meaning additional magnetic field strength will not produce an increase in the flux density. Same here. So when you return to here, after this coercive force, it will just come to saturation point. Then when you go for reverse, then again positive magnetization means you go positive side, this is the residual magnetism. Then it will come to this zero, this coercive force, negative. Positive coercive force, this is negative coercive force, that is coercive force total. And this again go for saturation. And this cycle is repeated again and again. It will never reach to zero. It will never reach to O, you can say. So that is called hysteresis loop. When the reverse magnetic field strength is reduced to zero, the flux density again lacks the magnetic field strength, leaving residual magnetism in the material OE. Illustrated figure 4E. Flux density drops to zero at point F. The application of coercive force OE. Increasing the field strength results. The magnetic polarity changing back to its original direction on the stresses diagram as in indicated in figure 4 F. So this is a last. The residual magnetism and heat treatment. The Curie point are above about 750 degrees centigrade, 1400 degrees Fahrenheit for steel. So when you heat it above this temperature, Magnetic domains return to random orientation and the material is demagnetized fully when it is cool, making further demagnetization unnecessary. Magnetic permeability. Permeability can be described as the ease with which material can be magnetized. So more specifically, permeability is the ratio between the flux density and the magnetic field strength. B divided by H. The reciprocal of permeability is reluctance. Find the resistance of material to change the magnetic field strength. So, is to magnetize. 
So is to demagnetize, that is both. Difficult to magnetize, difficult to demagnetize. They're affected by chemical composition, microstructure, grain size. The stresses look for uh, different hardened steel, very fat stresses curve, very fat, very big coercive force, very big residual field. But when it is annealed, low carbon steel stresses look, very low coercive force, very low residual magnetism. So the particles, iron particles, are having very low, co no coercive force about, about no residual magnetism, no coercive force, you can say, about zero, but near to zero. It has something, and then due to magnetic field of earth, sometimes it is problem. So you can just clear it by AC magnetism. So this is a hint, stresses loop for hardened steel and uh, low permeability, high reluctance, high retentivity, high residual magnetism, requires high coercive force for removal. And 6B is stresses loop for annealed or carbon steel. It is typically of material high permeability, low reluctance. The low, here low permeability, high reluctance. So it is opposite to each other, high retentivity. It is low permeability, so high retentivity. This is low retentivity. High permeability is low retentivity. Low permeability is high retentivity. And low residual magnetism that requires low coercive force for removal. A high carbon alloy would be harder to magnetize, demagnetize, and thus would have low permeability, high reluctance, and high retentivity. These are questions to direct. Flux fields, alternative current, half wave current, full wave current. Alternating current, one hertz equals to one cycle per second. The 60 hertz is 60 cycles per second. This is, this is one cycle, complete zero to this here. Or even from here to here also, you can call a cycle. Anywhere from the same place to same place. You can call a cycle, but easily you can say this is a cycle. In one cycle, the current flows from zero to maximum positive value and then drop back to zero. At zero, it reverses the direction, goes to a maximum negative peak and returns to zero. That is easy way to tell that the cell of penetration is caused by skin effect. The skin effect is the region alternating current is recommended when testing for service induced surface discontinuities, open to surface discontinuities. However, the skin effect of alternating current is less at lower frequencies, resulting from deeper penetration lines. At 25 cycles, the penetration is demonstrably deeper and the frequency of 10 cycle per second or less, the skin effect is almost non-existent. But this cycles is not possible because it is fixed 60 or 50 cycles for different countries. It is never changed. Maybe some instruments can do it with special instruments. Value of peak current at the top of the sine wave cycle for this AC current is 1.41 that of the current read on the meter. So this is the peak current. Current amperage range from 100 ampere to about 20,000 ampere depending on test object magnetizing and method, method of magnetizing for AC. Lower amperage drawn from handle device that operate from standard 120 volt outlets. 
safety precautions all the electrical appliances for example wires plugs Point should be properly tested before use for the kind of arc, electric shock, burn, etc. Contact between the material and current carrying equipment for magnetic particle testing prods, for example, should be properly made to avoid any arc or damage to the material. Many units can be hand cranked to hold the part in place between the headstock and their air control pressure is applied with a foot pedal to ensure a solid fit between the stocks. In order to avoid hand injuries, an inspector must maintain extreme care when placing test objects between the headstock of the magnetizing unit. Direct current. Magnetic field produced by direct current penetrate deeper into the test object that fields produced by alternating current, making detection of subsurface this continuity is possible. In the presence of direct current fields, dry powder particle behaves though they are immobile, tending to remain wherever they happen to land on the surface of the test object. This contrast with what happen to dry powder particles in presence of alternating current and halfway fields. In these fields, the particle display mobility of a surface because of pulsating character of the fields. The so particle mobility, mobility aids considerably to formation of particle accumulation indication at discontinuities. The disadvantages. The disadvantage of using batteries are the weight when a number of them must be used to obtain high amperage current, the frequent ch charging and maintenance required, and their limited drive and replacement cost. Full wave direct current is usually obtained from three phase system using full three phase bridge rectifiers. A rectifier or diode is device that allows electric current to flow through it in only one direction. So half wave current, the pulsation of half wave vibrates the magnetic particles thereby aiding their migration across the surface to form indications at discontinuities. This particle mobility which is very pronounced when the magnetic powder is used contrast with the immobility of the powder when pure direct current is used. There is some skin effect when HW is used caused by pulsating magnetic fields produced by current. However, the effect of field penetration is small at the usual power frequencies of 50 Hz, 60 Hz. This produces a series of current pulses that start at zero, reach at maximum point, drop back to zero, and then pause until the next position cycle begins. This hub wave. If you get another, then it is full wave. So half wave SW wave from. Oh, this is crude for dry particle and subsurface. Problem with demagnetization, the current doesn't reverse. Alternating current can be used to remove some residual magnetism, but the skin effect of alternating current and the deeper penetration of HW causes incomplete demagnetization. Single phase full wave current. So this is possible with different electronics. Single phase full wave current. Essentially same penetrating ability as three phase for Full wave, the current fluctuation causes skin effect that is not significant. It is also possible to incorporate switching devices in the circuitry that reverse the current flow. It is costly. Single phase equipment requires 1.73 more input current than three phase unit. This becomes very significant at high magnetizing current when an input value exceeds 600 amperes. So three phase 
full wave current three phase full wave magnetic particle equipment rectifies all three alternating current phases and inverts the negative flow to a positive direction producing a nearly flat line direct magnetizing current it is not so good for uh, but okay for advantage of single phase three phase full wave or else all of the advantages of single full wave plus some additional benefits to current flow in the power line is spread over three phases reducing the demand of nearly half the demand on the line is also balanced. Each leg provides a portion of current single phase pulls up the current from two legs, resulting in an unbalanced line load. Many power companies charge higher rate to customer with unbalanced high current requirement. So voltage and current factors. Various factors of adjusting current range include material and type of Test object, thickness of the test object, sensitivity of the test object, size and depth of the expected discontinuity, length of coil and object to be tested, types of rectification, sensitivity of the medium, not the test object. That is why they write like this. Sensitivity of the test object. Types of rectification, for example, half wave, full wave, and so on. Since voltage remain constant in most equipment during the magnetic particle testing, the arrangement of accounting for voltage fluctuation is not necessary. Since the current and magnetic field testing varies within the range, the equipment is for measuring current, as its ammeter should be properly calibrated for the duration. Okay, ammeter should be calibrated yearly. Nowadays, it is for I think six months and now one year, something like that. Okay, we'll stop here.